ultimate guide to Viking cruise ships and itineraries. The Upscale Cruise brand has carved out a niche since its founding in 1997, catering specifically to a certain type of thoughtful, inquisitive, generally older traveler who is looking to explore the world and learn a thing or two along the way. Most Viking customers are approaching their retirement years, or are already there and they're eager to finally see all the places they didn't have time to visit when they were raising kids and establishing careers in their younger years. For this subset of travelers, Viking offers a wide range of both ocean and river cruise itineraries that have a heavy focus on the destinations visited. Viking voyages bring a lot of extended stays in ports where passengers get more time to explore historical sites and experience the local culture than is typical on cruises. The line offers included in the fare tours in every port, allowing every passenger on board to get a guided experience during stops without having to pay extra. In general, Viking voyages are highly inclusive, in keeping with its no nickel and diming philosophy. On board, Vikings programming revolves heavily around what the line calls cultural enrichment lectures by experts on topics related to the places its ships visit, as well as cultural and culinary offerings that often have a local tie-in. What Viking ships don't offer is a lot of onboard amusements aimed at families and younger travelers. If it's a floating celebration you're looking for in a vacation, this isn't the line for you. As Viking founder Torstein Hagen likes to say, a Viking cruise is the thinking person's cruise, not the drinking person's cruise. Its focus is on destinations and enrichment. The elegant, Scandinavian-influenced design of its ships. It's no nickel and diming philosophy. Viking has more ships than any other major cruise brand in the world, more than 90 in all. The exceptions are two recently unveiled Viking Ocean vessels specifically designed for expedition cruising, a type of cruising that involves traveling to remote, hard-to-reach places on hardy vessels that carry their own landing craft. At 47,800 tons, these ocean ships are less than a fourth the size of the giant megaships being built by the likes of Royal Caribbean and MSC Cruises, in keeping with Vikings' focus on intimate, upscale voyages. Vikings' two expedition ships, Viking Octantis and Viking Polaris, are smaller than the above vessels, as is typical for expedition ships, and carry 378 passengers at maximum occupancy. At last count, Viking had more than 80 river ships in its fleet, an astounding number that is the result of blistering growth over the past decade. As noted above, almost all of Viking's river ships are of the same basic design and are known as longships, a reference to the historic vessels used by Vikings in the Middle Ages. Viking has also built slightly shorter versions of the longships measuring 262 feet, 361 feet or 410 feet in length specifically to sail on rivers where lock sizes or other navigational factors require a smaller vessel. Viking operates several smaller, purpose-built vessels on the Nile River in Egypt and the Mekong River in Southeast Asia, and it has several older river vessels that predate the longships that operate in Russia and Ukraine. Viking has one of the most diverse arrays of itineraries of any cruise line, mostly due to the fact that it operates both ocean cruises and river cruises. Viking has a particularly large footprint when it comes to European river itineraries, with a wide range of sailings on nearly every European river of any note. You'll find Viking's ocean ships in other key cruise destinations as well, such as Alaska, the Caribbean and Panama Canal, Canada and New England, South America, Asia and Australia. The same vessel this past summer launched the line's first voyages in the Great Lakes, a destination that only a handful of cruise operators visit. Among the line's voyages, you'll find everything from 8-day cruises in the Mediterranean to 138-day around-the-world voyages. Most Viking passengers are North Americans who are approaching retirement age or already retired. The company's core market is people who range in age from 55 to 75 years, although it does draw some passengers who are younger or older. In general, it's an educated crowd, with many passengers coming from professional backgrounds or a life of running their own businesses. They're often people who have spent years focused on work and building up savings for retirement, and they're finally ready to start enjoying the fruits of their labor by spending some of the savings on travel to places they've long put off visiting.
In general, you'll find a lot of couples on Viking ships and some solo travelers. You'll also find the occasional multi-generational group, a retired couple traveling with their working-age adult children, for instance. However, unlike nearly every other cruise brand, what you won't find are families with young kids. As noted above, Viking doesn't allow passengers under the age of 18 on its ships a key differentiator for the brand as compared to other cruise lines. Is a balcony something you can't live without when staying in a cabin on a cruise ship? Viking is one of the only cruise brands in the world that offers a balcony with every cabin on every ocean ship it operates, even the least expensive, smallest cabins. That's something that even the most upscale of Viking's ocean cruise rivals including Oceania Cruises, Azamara, Seaborn, Silver Sea Cruises and Regent Seven Seas Cruises can't say. Even the smallest cabins on Viking's ocean ships are large by cruise ship standards at 270 square feet, and the largest suites measure nearly 1,500 square feet. If you're looking for a big open room on an ocean cruise, Viking offers you plenty of options. Viking also offers lots of balcony cabins and suites on its river ships, something that isn't always the case in the river cruise business, where space on vessels is at a premium. Design-wise, Viking cabins and suites across all categories are modern and elegant in an understated sort of way, with Scandinavian-influenced furnishings and décor that tie to the Norwegian heritage of the company's founder. You'll find beds topped with crisp, white duvets and Scandinavian throws, comfortable contemporary sofas and chairs in neutral tones, and light wood desks and side tables that combine to offer a residential feel in bedroom areas. Soothing, minimalist colors, think creams, grays and lighter blues, are the order of the day. In keeping with the high-end nature of the brand, Viking cabins and suites have a lot of upscale touches, from sumptuous bedding that envelops you to heated floors in bathrooms. What they are is eminently functional, with storage in all the right places, lots of outlets for charging your devices and lighting right where you need it. We love the reading lights built into the fabric headboards, which are in addition to the lamps on bedside tables. Other little touches in Viking cabins that show a line thinking about functionality as much as decor include the large and clear lettering on the Freya toiletries that you'll find in every Viking cabin bathroom. The toiletries were specifically designed with bigger and clearer lettering than is common for toiletries on cruise ships and at hotels so that the line's older customers would have no trouble differentiating the body wash from the body lotion and shampoo. The number of restaurants and other dining options that you'll find on Viking ships will vary greatly depending on whether you are sailing on an ocean or a river ship. All of Viking's ocean-going ships, which are much bigger than its river ships, have at least four and usually more outlets serving food of some sort. Every one of the line's 930 passenger ocean ships has a main restaurant with rotating menus that include dishes that tie to the destination where the vessel is sailing. The main restaurants on these ships are notable for their walls of glass that can slide open to create al fresco dining, something that is unusual in the cruise world. Each of the 930 passenger ocean ships also has two smaller restaurants with specialized cuisine, Manfredi's, a high-end Italian eatery, and the Chef's Table, which offers a five-course tasting menu themed around a specific cuisine that changes every few days. Each passenger is only allowed to make one to three reservations per cruise at the eateries, depending on which category of cabin they have booked. Passengers can grab a snack, with a Norwegian twist, at the forward-facing lounge sat atop the ships, which are home to a small food counter called Mamsons. Named after Viking founder Torstein Hagen's mother, it offers authentic tastes of Norway such as traditional heart-shaped waffles, specialty cakes and the brown goat cheese that is found around the country. Passengers will also find finger sandwiches, scones and teas in the afternoon at the glass-topped Winter Garden Lounge at the top of every vessel. The line's smaller expedition ocean ships, Viking Octantis and Viking Polaris, offer four of the above venues, the restaurant, World Café, Manfredi's and Mamsons. Viking's river ships, by contrast, typically offer just two eateries, a main restaurant where passengers eat most of their meals and a smaller, casual buffet with indoor and outdoor seating. Many of the activities on board Viking's ocean ships revolve around cultural enrichment, to use a phrase often used by Viking executives. 
On any given day, you might find an expert on one of the destinations you're visiting lecturing in the theater, or a classical musician performing in the central atrium, known as the living room. On the line's river ships, you'll also find onboard lectures, usually related to the destinations the ships are visiting, as well as destination-related demonstrations and tastings. In keeping with Vikings' focus on cultural immersion, lecturers often have expertise related to the places you'll be visiting on your sailing. The line also draws a wide range of interesting and accomplished people from all walks of life to serve as guest lecturers, including well-known academics, diplomats and even astronauts. Just be careful, some years are far more expensive than others. You'll also find musicians including pianists and guitar players performing at times in the Viking living room, a three-deck high, atrium-like space at the center of the ship. It's also home to the ship's explorer's desk, the equivalent of a guest relations area on other ships. The centerpiece of the top deck of each of Viking's ocean ships is the main pool area, which is home to a pool, hot tub and rows of lounge chairs, as well as comfortable seating areas. The entire main pool area is covered with a glass macrodome that can be opened on short notice on warm and sunny days, or closed if the ship encounters inclement weather. Other interior spaces that are part of the ocean ships include a stylish spa with a thermal suite area that is open to all passengers at no extra charge and a fitness center. Viking has long argued that few of its customers use fitness centers and the space that would be devoted to one is better used for other things. However, if you're fitness-obsessed, Viking river ships may not be the best choice for your river trip. Viking does not allow children under the age of 18 on its vessel sand thus has no children's programs on any of its vessels. Viking operates international itineraries where a passport is required. Note that it is important that the name on your reservation be exactly OSIT as stated on your passport or other official proof of nationality. Viking adds an automatic service gratuity of $15 per person per day to final bills, depending on your cabin category. If you are unhappy with the service you receive, you can adjust this amount before disembarking at the explorer's desk. As part of Viking's no nickel and diming philosophy, the line offers free Wi-Fi service to passengers on all its ships throughout sailings. Note that internet service can be slow at times of heavy use, as is typical on cruise vessels. Unlike many lines, Viking allows you to bring your own wine, champagne, beer and liquor onto ships at embarkation with no limits. Some Viking ships, including all of the line's ocean vessels, have self-serve laundrettes on cabin decks with washing machines, dryers, irons and ironing boards. The laundrettes are stocked with detergent for the washing machines that, unlike on many cruise ships with laundrettes, do not come with an extra cost. Otherwise, there are fees comparable to what you'll pay cleaners at home. Viking's soon-to-debut Mississippi River ships will offer self-service laundrettes but no takeout laundry and pressing service. If it's a sea day in a warm weather destination, and you're bound for the top deck, a short sleeve shirt and shorts are just fine. The line asks passengers to keep things elegant casual when heading to any of the ship's dining venues, performances or special events. This evening dress code is not enforced at the casual World Cafe eateries on Viking Ocean ships, where passengers can go even more casual in the evenings. Viking doesn't have a loyalty program in the traditional sense, one where passengers earn points every time they travel with the brand and progress through multiple tiers that bring an ever-expanding array of perks. An invitation to a members-only Viking Explorer Society cocktail party. Early word by email or regular mail on new Viking cruises itineraries and new ships, as well as special note that the credits mentioned above cannot always be combined with promotion related. The ultimate guide to Vikings cruise Viking sailings aren't inexpensive. Some of the line's more exotic sailings such as its expedition trips to and related six ways to travel to antarctica still as is typical for cruise lines at the high end viking inc in addition to a room on board and all meals the fares include beer wine and soft drinks with lunch and dinner 
specialty coffees, teas and bottled water around the clock, the latter is something relatively few lines roll into their base fares and shore excursions, Viking fares do include port taxes and fees, which can add up to, most other lines do not include port taxes and fees in their base fares and add them later, note that Viking does charge extra for two key things that many luxury lines such as Silver Sea, Seaborne and Regent do not, this is one reason some cruisers do not consider Viking at quite the same, if you're sure you know what sort of cabin you want, on which ship, on which itinerary and about a dozen other things, you can head over to viking.com. That said, given the complexity of booking a cruise, there are a lot of decisions to make during the booking process, trust us, we always recommend that you use a seasoned travel agent. A good travel agent will quiz you about your particular interests, travel style and preferences, and steer you to the perfect crew. An agent can also help you if something goes wrong before, during or after. If you're sure that Viking is your line, look for a travel agent who specializes in trips with you. want someone who knows all of the line's many itineraries in detail and, preferably, has sailed on or at least inspected some of the line's vessels, too, to understand the very related. How to book a cruise with points and miles. Whether you use a travel agent or not, make sure to maximize your credit card spending when paying for the cruise by using a credit card that offers a This could be the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which offers three ultimate rewards points per dollar. Viking can be defined as much by what it isn't as what it is. It's not a line that offers megaships topped with every sort of amusement known. What it is is a line that has focused very specifically on thinking persons cruises that offer a deeper dive into the destinations that its ships visit. Editorial disclaimer. Opinions expressed here are the authors alone, not those of any bank, credit card issuer, airline or hotel chain, and have not been reviewed. Our points obsessed staff uses a plethora of credit cards on a daily basis. If anyone on our team wouldn't recommend it to a friend or a family member, we wouldn't recommend our opinions are our own and have not been reviewed, approved, or endorsed by our advert. If you are looking to take your premium rewards to the highest level, this card is really a no-brain. Chase's ultimate rewards make points easy to redeem, with a wide range of 10 airline and 3 hotel trends. Despite the high annual fee, Chase is consistently adding new benefits to keep the card competitive in a fear asterisk dollar 300 annual travel credit as reimbursement for travel purchases access to chase ultimate rewards hotel and airline unlimited 3x points on the broad category of asterisk 50 percent more value when you redeem your points for travel broad definitions for travel and dining bonus category you must spend the 300 dollars travel credit before earning 3x point earn 80,000 bonus points after you spend four thousand dollars on purchases in the first that's one thousand two hundred dollars toward travel when you asterisk dollar 300 annual travel credit as reimbursement for travel purchases to earn 5x total points on flights and 10x total points on hotels and car rentals when you purchase travel through chase ultimate rewards immediately after the first earn 3x points on other travel and dining and one point per one dollar get 50 percent more value when you redeem your points for travel through chase access to 1300 plus airport lounges worldwide after an easy one-time enrollment in priority pass select and up to one count on trip cancellation interruption insurance auto rental collision damage wave if you are looking to take your premium rewards to the highest level this card is really a no-brain chase's ultimate rewards make points easy to redeem with a wide range of 10 airline and three hotel trends despite the high annual fee chase is consistently adding new benefits to keep the card competitive in a fear asterisk dollar 300 annual travel credit as reimbursement for travel purchases access to chase ultimate rewards hotel and airline unlimited 3x points on the broad category of travel Asterisk 50% more value when you redeem your points for travel. Broad definitions for travel and dining bonus category. You must spend the $300 travel credit before earning 3x points. Earn 80,000 bonus points after you spend $4,000 on purchases in the first. That's $1,200 toward travel when you. Asterisk dollar 300 annual travel credit as reimbursement for travel purchases. To earn 5x total points on flights and 10x total points on hotels and car rentals when you purchase travel through chase ultimate rewards immediately after the first earn 3x points on other travel and dining and one point per one dollar get 50 percent more value when you redeem your points for travel through chase access to 1300 plus airport lounges worldwide after an easy one-time enrollment in priority pass select and up to one